Welcome all, this is Russ. I wanted to make a little video here to give you an introduction into how to use Unix and how to SSH to remote machines. This is something that's going to be an important part of what you're going to be doing in this class and probably in a number of classes in this department because we very often are going to be using Lectura or other related machines as our machines of record where we go um, and do our development. Sometimes you will actually be writing your code on Lectura. Sometimes you might be writing your code on your own personal machine and then uploading to Lectura. It's important that you actually go test your code on Lectura because that's where I'm going to be doing my testing. That's where I'm going to be doing my grading. So you need to always do a sanity check on Lectura to make sure that your code works properly there before you think that you're done. So the first question is, how are we going to actually access this remote machine? To do that, we're going to be using a protocol called SSH, the Secure Shell Protocol. SSH is just a way to connect to another machine, and essentially, this is not totally true, but it's it's close enough. You can imagine that when you're SSHing to another machine, it's as if you were hooking up your laptop to that machine, typing commands on that machine as if it was local. Now the question is, how are we going to do SSH? If you have access to a command line on your own machine, you can actually SSH with a command line tool. So if you are running on a Mac, you can just open up the terminal. Or as you see, I'm running a, a tool called Sigwin. Sigwin is an open source implementation of the Unix tool chain running on Windows. So I can do all of my Unix commands on a Windows box. Uh, if you're running Windows 10, you can install the Linux subsystem for Unix or Linux subsystem for Windows, which will give you access to all of those tools as provided by Microsoft. In any of those cases, if you have a terminal, you can just SSH by typing SSH, username at destination. Now your username that you're going to use on Lectura is always the same as your net ID. Unfortunately, your net ID password and your computer science password are different. I should bring that up. All right. Here's where you can get your computer science password set up, if you haven't already. Uh, I've gone to www.cs.arizona.edu, Computing Services. We're going to authenticate. Now, this is actually authenticating with our NetID. And if you want to then create or reset your password, you can click on this link here. And that will do a password reset. Um, there is a delay. It takes 30 minutes to an hour. I forget exactly how long it is to reset your password. But you will be sent an email giving you a temporary password. The next time you try to SSH in, you'll use your temporary password. And then they will require you to immediately change it. All right. So let's assume that you know what your CS password is. We're going to SSH. Right here, we're doing SSH space username at the host you want to attach to. Lectura.cs.arizona.edu. There are actually a number of different machines that you can SSH to. There's Lectura.cs, there's Oxford.cs, Cambridge.cs. They're all very, very similar machines. Now, uh, I have this already configured for... Uh, key-based authentication. You can go Google for SSH key-based authentication to learn how, if you find that interesting. For most of you, what it'll do is it will ask you for your password here. You'll type it, you'll get in. This is how you can, this is how you can connect from any of the command line based systems. Now, if you are on Windows and you don't want to install the, the Unix subsystem for Windows 10, or you don't want to run SigWin, then what we recommend is that you run PuTTY. And I apologize that this is open in Internet Explorer. I did a search with Windows, and anyway, it's embarrassing to use Internet Explorer, but I'll live with it. <laughs> um, PuTTY is this great tool that is something, it's a tool that allows you to SSH. It's going to accomplish the same thing as the SSH command we have here. 
um, but it's going to give you a slightly graphical interface for it. Now, sometimes students get confused here. They get confused between what's PuTTY and what's SSH and what's Lectura. So let's see if I can draw the distinction here. Lectura is the machine we're going to go to. SSH is the communication protocol we're going to use to talk to Lectura. PuTTY is the piece of software that we run on our local machine that we use to talk SSH to various places. PuTTY actually can be used to attach to any SSH server. If you're playing around with Amazon EC2, for instance, you and you create an instance, you would SSH using PuTTY. All right, so anyway... Uh, you can download PuTTY. I've not actually, uh, because I always use it on the command line, I don't have it installed. So I'm going to go through the process of downloading and installing it here, and I'll be back when I'm done. All right, I'm back. I've installed PuTTY, and now I can show you how to connect here. Um, so you're going to type the, the host that you're attempting to connect to. Go ahead and say OK. Oh, I forgot about this. Um, so this, this is a little quirk of SSH because it wants to be able to confirm that the machine, it, machine it's talking to is the real machine you were wanting to connect to. And unfortunately, the first time that you connect, there's no way to really confirm that. So this warning says the server's host key is not cached in the res registry. Basically, they're saying, do you believe that you're talking to the real machine? Theoretically, clicking yes here is a security risk, but you got to live with it. By the way, the first time you SSH on the command line, you'll see the same thing. I didn't see it because I've SSH'd a lecturer for years. All right, so uh, you'll only see that once. It's okay to click yes. It's not the greatest solution, but it works. All right, so we're going to give our user ID here, and now we're going to give our CS password. I don't have key-based authentication set up for PuTTY, so I had to give my password. And now what you'll see here is that PuTTY is giving me the same window as when I SSH to it um, uh, from, the command, from the command line. So what we really have What we really have are just two different identical connections. They're not connected to each other, but they're in the same file system there. All right, so what are the com commands you're going to need to use to navigate through a, um, a Unix server? First thing is you're going to need ls. You can do ls. Well, OK, so ls lists the set of files. If it's an empty directory, it doesn't show anything. I prefer ls minus al with gives a lot more information. ls minus al tells me that there are a couple of different directories. Every directory has the dot and the dot dot directory, um, which when you get into deeper into Unix, you'll know a little bit more about. Um, but let's go ahead and let's just do a git clone. That'll give me an interesting working directory. You can go watch my video about git to see how that works. Right, I'm gonna I have to get my password for this. All right, so I've checked out some files from GitHub. You can go watch my videos about GitHub to see exactly what I'm doing. I'm just gonna use this right now as an interesting working directory to play around with. A couple of things that you've seen me use, ls minus al, so that's AL, ls space minus al, gives us this long listing of all the files in the directory. Ds here on the beginning mean directories, the minuses mean ordinary files. These are the names of the files. These are their sizes in bytes. This is when they were last modified. They were just checked out, so they've been recently modified. This says that I'm the owner of these files. Um, you can navigate through things by using the cd command, change directory. And so if I want to go into the cheat sheets directory, I can go cd cheat sheets. Now you can type it all the way out, but watch what happens if I hit tab right now. Tab completion. It's a pretty cool little feature, so we can look at what's in cheat sheets. Well, it's a number of different things. Not all. Uh, most of these were PDFs. We're not going to be able to view because we're SSH'd into a remote machine. Um, but we could. I can use cat to look at various. Um, 
text files. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so I've got a whole bunch of, this is, you don't need to know what the contents of this file are here. What I'm mostly showing you is that the cat command, cat, C-A-T, allows you to uh, view the contents of a text file. So if you want to look at your assembly file or your C files, cat will just print them out to the screen. If you want to go out of a directory, you can use cd dot dot. That is our way of going. See, we went from HWC cheat sheets into HWC. You can, when you do a CD, you can go through multiple directories. Let's go into HWC compile slash semantic, and we'll look at phase 20.h. Now, I'm using an editor here. The editor I'm going to use is called VI. It's a very efficient editor. Um, a lot of geeks use it. Actually, there's a big religious war within the geek community. About half of the uber geeks use VI. About half of them use something else called Emacs. But they're both very good editors. Uh, VI allows you to go through and you can edit the file, do whatever changes you want to do. Um, you won't be using VI if you're a newbie at Unix generally, although you're welcome to go look at a VI tutorial and teach yourself about it. Um, uh, what you'll mostly be using if you want to do any editing on Lectura itself, so you'll be using Pico or Nano. I believe they're the same command. Pico is a little editor. Now, you cannot use your mouse here because we're SSH'd into the machine. Well, the only real interface that we have is a keyboard interface. So if I go try to select, I'm actually selecting here in the terminal. I'm not actually affecting Lectura at all. So the, nothing interesting is happening. Um, instead, whoops, I didn't, I did something. I'm not sure what command I hit. All right. Uh, let me bring this up again. Um, Pico will allow you to navigate around using the arrow keys. Um, and other than the fact that you can't click to go somewhere, this basically works like Notepad. It should be very familiar to you. Uh, everything just works more or less the way you would expect it. When you want to save a file or if you want to get out of the editor, you look down here to see your commands list. And caret X means command X or control X. On Mac, I'm not sure if it's command X or control X, but you can just experiment to find out. Minus or the, the control O is right out. That means save. Why do they call it right out instead of save? I don't know. It's just old. So you can control O. It'll say, do you want to call this file phase 20.h? Yeah, I do. When I'm ready to leave, Control x will have me get out, and now I'm back at the command line. And when I look at phase 20.h, I'll see that uh, I added an extra line. It's been modified there. Um, you'll also be doing other things like running commands. So... We have the run test. Um, you don't need to know what run test is. That's just part of this special repository. You're never going to run it. But the key here that you should notice is that run test is a script in the current directory. And I can do dot slash run tests to execute it. Um, all right, so it's not going to run because I don't have this all built. But you can see the same thing. Let me go into my teaching directory. We'll look at one of... Um, this is one of the... This is a mirror of the website of one of my classes. And I've got a file called grade sim one Well, if when you want to extract this... Uh, I'm sorry, when you want to execute this, you're going to extract all these files out of GitHub Classroom somewhere. And then you can say grade sim one And what that'll do is that'll run the grade sim one command in the current directory. Um, there's a lot of other things that you might want, uh, that you might be doing, um, but I think that's a pretty good 
introduction for the very very basic things. Uh, let's see what what else could you what else might you be doing? Um, let's see you might want to create a directory. Makedir will create a directory. So we've now created something called foo. We can go into foo if we want. Um, rmdir will clean it up. To remove a file, you can say remove such and such a file. Uh, you can watch my git my git video to see some of the the git commands that are allowed. Um, so I think that's a pretty good start. All right. So that's the basic introduction. I'm ha happy to give you more information if and when you want to use it. Um, but it's a worthwhile thing to learn because we're going to be doing a lot of development that will involve Unix machines. And so being able to navigate the command line will help you a lot long term. All right. Hope this was useful and I will see you all later.